every day, there are new stories in the media about Australia's housing and rental crisis. The housing affordability problem, whether for owners or renters, has never been more front and center in the headlines. Why is housing so expensive in Australia? And how did we even get here? The lender's interest on the owner-occupied house was the lowest at 2.4% in April 2022. In two years, it raised to 6.3%, thanks to the rising inflation and tightening monetary policy. Paying off a loan is definitely much harder now. Can young people still become homeowners? In this video, we'll discuss how much salary is required to buy a house or a unit in major Australian cities. We'll also look at three household salary ranges, 41,000 a year representing the bottom quintile income of all Australian households, 93,000 a year representing the typical Australian household income, and 177,000 a year representing the fourth quintile. According to the latest 2021 census, almost one third of Australian households rented their home in the 1920 financial year, while 66% of Australian households own their own home with or without a mortgage. It is estimated that around 33% of homeowners are entirely mortgage-free. Keep in mind that this includes your parents' and grandparents' generations, so don't panic. As of March 2024, the median rent for a house in Australian capital cities is $630 per week, while the average mortgage repayment is about $899 per week for owners with an average mortgage of $624,000 and an interest rate of 6.91%. Let's talk about renting first. How much rent can you afford? In 2021, median rents began increasing in all states, offset by the COVID pandemic. Based on the December 2023 CoreLogic most recent median rental index, here are the median weekly rents in each state and major capital cities. The average weekly rent in Sydney is $745, making it the country's most expensive capital city to rent in. The northern beaches are the most expensive place to rent, with $1,167 per week, while the outer southwest was the most affordable at $518 per week. CoreLogic doesn't have a single feature for regional New South Wales, but the rent does drop once you move outside the Sydney catchment area. For example, in the far west of New South Wales, the average rent is about $404 per week. Canberra is the second most expensive capital city with a median weekly rent of $651. Moving up to Queensland, its capital city Brisbane has an average rent of $627. The western suburbs of Brisbane are the most expensive with a median rent of $744, only $1 lower than the average across Sydney. The Gold Coast costs an average of $792 per week and the Sunshine Coast costs an average of $711 per week. All other areas throughout the state fall under the $700 mark per week. Moving up again to the Northern Territory, its capital city Darwin's average rent is $611 per week. The state costs $526 as a median rental price. Coming to Victoria's capital city, Melbourne costs an average of $565 per week Inner East suburbs are the most expensive, with the median rent in these areas being $690 per week. The average rent cost throughout the state is $500 per week. Tasmania's capital, Hobart, is the cheapest capital city in Australia to rent in, with a median weekly rent of $535. The rest of Tasmania's cities all fall under the $500 median weekly rent price. South Australia's capital city, Adelaide, costs about $565 as the median rent, same as Melbourne. Perth is one of Australia's more expensive capital cities to rent in, with an average of $630 per week across the city. How much of your income should be spent on rent? A common piece of advice in personal finance is to follow a safe rent to income ratio. Ideally, your rent should be no more than 30% of your after-tax net income, with the sweet spot being around 25%. Spending more than 30% of your take-home income on rent can cause housing stress. Let's face it, no matter how you cut your expenses, rent will likely be one of your biggest expenses. In Australia, renters typically spend 30.8% of their income on housing, an almost 10-year high across the board. Rent in Sydney takes up nearly 40% of a typical renter's income. No wonder Sydney is the most unaffordable city to rent in. The rising interest rates have made many people to give up the idea of buying a home, pushing rental demand higher and higher. 
According to Domain's March 2024 rental report, rental vacancy rates are at record lows in capital cities like Sydney, Melbourne and Perth. All capitals are well below the ideal vacancy rate range of 2% to 3%. If we follow the 30% rule and the current average weekly rent, here is what you would need to afford rent in various cities. To afford a weekly rent of $535 in Hobart, you would need an annual gross household income of $142,000. To afford a weekly rent of $565, such as Adelaide and Melbourne, you would need an annual gross combined income of $151,000. To afford a weekly rent of $611 in Darwin, you would need an annual gross combined income of $166,000. To afford a weekly rent of $627 to $630 in Brisbane and Perth, you would need an annual gross combined income of $171,000 to $172,000. To afford a weekly rent of $651 in Canberra, you would need an annual gross combined income of $178,000. To afford a weekly rent of $745 in Sydney, you would need an annual gross combined income of $210,000. Finally, to afford a weekly rent of $792 on the Gold Coast, you would need an annual gross combined income of $226,000. Back to our three households with the gross incomes 41K, 93K and 177K, Based on the 30% rule, the weekly rent they should budget are $189, $371, and $647. Low-income households would need government assistance to afford rent as finding a cheap rental with that budget is nearly impossible in most capital cities, especially given the current rental crisis. The typical Aussie household with a 93k gross income can only afford the regional New South Wales. For the top 20% of Australian households based on an income of 177k a year can afford most cities except for Sydney, Canberra and the Gold Coast. Of course, the 25 to 30% rule doesn't work for everyone. If you are on a low income, it may be impossible to find rental accommodation that is less than 30% of your income. If you are spending too much of your income on rent, here are some ways to lower your rental expenses. Number one, get flatmates. This can save renters up to 16,000 a year. Just make sure to vet potential housemates thoroughly to avoid any unpleasant surprises. Number two, rent an older house. If you're saving for the great Australian dream of owning a home, you may consider compromising for the short term by renting an older house. Number three, negotiate. With a great rental history, you can always try to negotiate for lower rent. When it comes to living with debt, it's not always obvious just how much debt is too much. A useful rule of thumb to determine whether you can handle your level of debt is the 2836 rule. Here's how this rule works. No more than 28% of your gross monthly income should go towards your monthly mortgage repayment. Additionally, your home-related expenses plus any other debt such as home loans and credit cards should not exceed 36% of your income overall. Let's say an individual or a family has a gross monthly income of 5,000. They could budget up to 28% of it, which is 1,400 for a monthly mortgage payment and housing expenses. Any other debt shouldn't take more than 400. When it comes to home loans, most traditional lenders require a maximum household expense to income ratio of 28%. They will also examine the overall debt to income ratio. Income can include regular income from employment, overtime work, bonuses and investments. Debts include everything from credit cards, personal loans to home loans, tax debts and buy now pay later loans. For example, say you want to take out a 500,000 loan to buy a property, you also have a 20,000 car loan and a 10,000 credit card debt, bring your total debt to 530,000. If your gross income is 150,000, your debt to income ratio DTI would be 3.5, a DTI of 3 or below is very good. A DTI of 4 to 6 is good but not great. A DTI over 7 is generally considered risky. Since the pandemic, Australian lenders have tightened their lending requirements, clamping down especially hard on high DTI ratios. According to the latest lending indicators from the Australian Bureau of Statistics, the average home loan in Australia is 624000 Assuming a 20% down payment, this means borrowing 80%, which translates to buying a 780000 home. But how much salary can afford this? 
let's say the mortgage interest rate is 6.5%, which is on the lower side. The minimum monthly repayment would be $3,382. According to the 28% rule, a household income of $145,000 a year can afford this. And using this logic, let's work out how much income you need to purchase a house or a unit in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, and Perth, based on the median prices in March 2023. To afford an average 1.5 million house in Sydney with an 80% loan-to-value ratio, you will need a gross income of 255,600. To avoid mortgage stress, your income should be around 284,000. To afford an average 1 million house in Melbourne, you would need a gross income of $178,000 per year. To afford an average 806,000 house in Brisbane, you would need a gross income of $157,000 per year. To afford an average 672,000 house in Perth, you would need a gross income of $131,000 a year. Let's look at what salary required to buy a unit in the four cities. To afford an average $759,000 unit in Sydney with an 80% loan-to-value ratio, you will need a gross income of 137k. To avoid market stress, an income of around 148,000 is recommended. To afford an average 528,000 unit in Melbourne, you will need a gross income of 103,000 per year. To afford an average $450,000 unit in Brisbane, you will need a gross income of $92,000 per year. To afford an average $360,000 unit in Perth, you will need a gross income of $78,000 per year. Let's see how our three sample households fits into these scenarios. Household number one, $41K a year. Unfortunately, with this income, there's no hope of affording an average home in Australia. The maximum house price they can afford, assuming a 6.5% interest with a 25-year home loan, is around $178,000, which is practically non-existent in the current market. Household number two, $93K a year. This household can afford a unit worth $401,000, making it possible to buy a unit in Brisbane or Perth. Household number three was $177,000. With this income, they can afford a house worth $765,000, making it feasible to buy a house in Brisbane or Perth. Don't forget, this does not include your upfront expenditures, which include 20% down payment, closing costs, stamp duty, home insurance premiums, council rates, and all the other fund maintenance fees. For people who want to be homeowners or who are already servicing the loan, it's a pretty tough time right now. What do you think Australian houses are so expensive? Is it the low supply of housing stock? Tax policies like negative gearing and capital gain discounts or government planning restrictions on new housing? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. My name is Aria. See you next week. Bye.